What's up guys, back with another video. Today we're talking about the powerlifting meet that I just did last weekend with my good friend, Steven. So to start this off, I'm gonna give you guys the reason, the explanation for why I wanted to do this mock powerlifting meet and to kind of explain to you guys in general what my plans are for the future. Now the reason I wanted to do this mock powerlifting meet is because I wanted to, I wanted to have a day where I could load up the bench, the deadlift and the squat, all three of the major lifts, get myself under some max rep or some max rep-ish weight and to see how I felt the next couple of days. So as you guys may or may not know, I'm gonna be doing a powerlifting competition, whether it's the next four months, five months, six months, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure the location. I'm looking at a bunch of different federations and events. Obviously with everything going on right now, things are kind of up in the air and I'm not sure if you know it's gonna be, the, the events are even gonna happen or if they're gonna get canceled or postponed, whatever the case may be. But within the next six months, I am gonna be doing a powerlifting competition for sure. So with all that being said, that's why today, again, I wanted to get under three exercises, the three main exercises that you do in a powerlifting competition. I wanted to get under some max rep weight. We did a lot of volume as well. So we started at about 10 reps. We went down to six. Um, I have the reps right here, actually percentages. So we went from 10 reps to six reps, to four to three to two. And then we took solos, some singles, just to kind of see um, you know, how the weight was feeling. You know, if you take a, a, a single at say 90%, which is the first one that we took, and it felt like shit, then obviously you're not gonna keep going. So it just kind of lets you know where you're at, if you're having a good day, a bad day. And um, so we did 10 reps at 50%, six reps at 65, four at 70, three at 75, two at 85, and then we did solos at 90, 95, 100, and then the next one was the PR category. So if you did all three solos and they felt great, then you'd hop to a PR. Now there were some weights in there that weren't exactly as we wrote them down. There were some weights in there that I kind of changed on the spot, but that's kind of what you do. You know, like if you feel like you're having a better day in a certain exercise, then you can load up the weight and go a little bit heavier. And so for example, on this day, my deadlift, which has always been my weakest lift, was actually feeling great. As you guys can see in the clips here, the weight on both my 10 reps, my six reps, and even my four reps, they're all moving very smoothly. And for weight on those, I started at 187, 185 for the 10 reps. For six reps, went up to 245, 243. 70% uh, was 262. And not that those weights are anything crazy, but I was feeling really good at my form. My form and then the pace at which I was picking the bar up off the ground and the, the ability to keep my, my posterior chain engaged, like my hands and glutes and everything, they were just super fired up and felt really good. So I was um, really excited like right out the gate with how all this felt. Then on reps three and two, obviously we started to get a little bit heavier with 281, 318. And after I took that 318, 315, whatever it ended up being, um, I was really feeling like I could crush some heavier weights. So we took a single at 337, and then I moved up to 355, which 355, that's the most I've gotten within the last three or four months. My previous max on a deadlift was 365, and that was about seven or eight months ago. And after I hit that 365, it had been you know, quite some time since I was able to get back up there. And that was more due to lack of consistency in my training, not consistency with just like how often I train, because I've always been training. I've never taken more than two to three days off a week in, I don't know, four or five years. Uh, but consistency in the volume and the weight in which I was training with. So like the amount of weight I was doing, I wasn't doing a strict powerlifting program. I was for a while and then I hopped off. Um, you know, again, with everything going on in the last six months, it's been crazy. So my training is also kind of taking a different turn. I, I went to some lighter weights, some higher reps, and just wanted to build a little bit more size. And so my powerlifting was not the main focus for the last year. With all that being said, that's why I was really excited about hitting a PR in this deadlift. And when I hit this 355, I was like, man, you know, I, I know I have more in me. So we loaded up the bar. I put it at 377 because my all-time PR in a deadlift is 375. I hit that about two or three years ago at another gym that I owned when I was training with, um, again, Steven and one of my other training partners, Jay. So 375, at that time I was 161 pounds. Um, today, on this day, I weighed in at 158 in the morning. So I, I hit 377, I threw the pound plates on because we're doing like a mock powerlifting meet, right? So I threw those plates on. At 158, I hit 377. So that's an all-time lifetime PR right there. And again, I know it's nothing crazy, but for me, for the deadlift, it's always been my weakest lift. So to, to kind of have a, a rough couple of weeks and you know, kind of be off nutrition-wise and then throw myself into a mock powerlifting meet and do, uh, do that well, hit a PR on my weakest lift, I was really pumped up about that. Now, when I moved on to my bench and my squat, however, I kind of felt a, 
a little bit of a power drainage. Like I did not feel as pumped up. And obviously this is my first time doing a mock powerlifting meet or a powerlifting meet of any sort in general. So I think I expended a little bit too much energy on the deadlift and didn't keep enough of my tank for the bench. So as you guys can see in these clips on the bench, I have the numbers here, we're working up. We're starting at uh, 135 on the bench. We're going to 178. Uh, four reps went up to 192, for three reps went up to 206 or 205, and then for 85% for two reps, I moved up to 235. Now, that's where I max out at on uh, this day, but usually my one rep max for bench, which I've, I've hit in the last year, was 275. So I'm 40 pounds off of my last one rep max as of, I think it was three or four months ago. So that is not good. And again, I think it's because I took too much of the energy, both physically and mentally, and focused it on the deadlift. Um, and I think that's something that I'm gonna take and learn from. Because when I do an actual meet, obviously, first of all, guys, when you do an actual meet, you're not doing as many sets. So I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think when you're doing a power, power lifting meet, it's two or three working sets, or three or four working sets. You, 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 choose, uh, you choose your weights, and obviously throughout the day, you're warming up because you're there all day, so you get to warm up in a separate section. And then you choose two or three working weights, and then you hit your PR. So it's not nearly as much volume or as much, you know, as much sets, as much weight in each set. So I think that's what kind of um, really sent me for a, um, a run, essentially, physically. So all in all, I'm not disappointed with what I did. Um, 235, you know, it's, it's not super heavy, whatever. I don't think it's gonna, it wouldn't, it wouldn't place me in a competition, but this is not the numbers that I'd be aiming for in a competition. I would obviously kind of, kind of dial back, and if only to do two or three working sets, I would go heavier quicker, and I think I'd be able to get to 275 or 270, 265 at least. And yeah, so I kind of overall was really excited about the deadlift that kind of made my day and the bench was, it was whatever. I wasn't disappointed. I mean, I was a little disappointed, but in the grand scheme of things, you can't dis be disappointed when you're, again, doing something you've never done before and, you know, still hitting 85% at least on all three of your lifts. So moving on to the squat, the last lift of the day. Um, me and Steven were feeling pretty tired at this point, but squats always been something I've enjoyed and I've been really good at. To give you guys some background, before I had a lower back injury in 20, I think it was 2016. A few moments later. Yeah, it was 2016, before I had a lower back injury on my back squat, I weighed 155 pounds and I had a max rep of 375, uh, 375 pounds. And I was squatting every day for over a year. I think it was like a year and three or four months. And Steven was actually doing it with me as well. Me and Steven have been longtime friends, training partners. And so we've been squatting, or we squatted every day for a year, a year and some change, which eventually led to a back injury, but it was less about the squatting every day. It was more about me going too heavy, too quick, quickly and consistently. Bottom line is my back squat's always been really good. I've always felt comfortable in a back squat. I've always enjoyed the back squat. I've always looked forward to the back squat. So on this day, I remember specifically looking forward to the back squat, although I already felt gassed, like I said, from the, the bench to deadlift. But I kind of felt like if I could just get underneath the bar and, you know, obviously with a back squat, we're not using as much glutes and as much hamstrings and lower back. We, it's a little bit more quad, a little bit more hips. So I felt like, you know, my quads have always been able to handle a lot. So I kind of, I kind of when I was squatting, consciously tried to think of putting more weight into my quads and try and push more through my quads because at this point, my glutes from those deadlifts, from those deadlifts and from the bench were just shot. I could just feel my left glute. I didn't tweak it, but it was really, really, it got really sore really quickly and I was very fatigued. And so with the squats, guys, we started pretty light. We started at 170 for 10, worked up to 220 for six. We jumped to 238 for four, um, 255 for a three, 85% was 289, and then 90% was supposed to be 306. We kind of, on this lift, we kind of, um, I was, um, you know, I was trying to, I was in the mindset of trying to go heavier quicker. I felt like at this point, like we were already working out for an hour and 45 minutes. I was about to go catabolic and I just felt like, you know, although I was ready for the squat, I felt like I needed to eat. I needed to, you know, already shift my gear to recovery mode and get the workout over with. So I was like, all right, let's go heavier quicker. So we kind of jumped around and my PR again was 375, but that was years ago. My recent PR was 340. Um, and so I threw 315 on the bar. I took that for a solo after taking um, 305 and 315. It didn't feel bad. As you guys can see in the video, it actually was pretty smooth. And there was a point where I felt like at the bottom, my lower back and my quads, they didn't, they didn't give out, but my quads got really, really tight. And I almost felt like, uh, not a tear, not a, not a strain, not a pull, but I felt it getting really, really tight to the point where I felt like if I did another rep, 325 or even 335, or went for that, for that max of 340, um, I would have hurt myself. And I've been down that road. I've done that before. I've, I've had my lower back, I've torn my quad. So I, 
my goal in going forward, and you guys will see that in future videos, is just, it's, it's not to get hurt. I don't wanna get hurt, I wanna do this for the rest of my training uh, and fitness life if I can. Obviously not powerlifting for, until I'm 50, but um, I wanna lift and lift decently heavy for a very long time, so my goal has shifted from, you know, being a young 18 or 19 year old saying, load up the bar, give me, give me as much weight, and I'm gonna go until I pass out, till now, if I feel like something is off in my body, whether it's quad, hip, it's lower back, I'm gonna call it. I'm not gonna get injured. I'm not gonna go through that again because it sets me back, um, not just physically, but also mentally. So overall, guys, I was very happy with these three lifts. So if we total up all three of the lifts, if we do the deadlift at 377, we do the bench at 235, and then we add the squat of 315, we get a total of 927. So when you're talking about totals from a powerlifting standpoint, the total is essentially what you're aiming for, and that's what you're trying to get at the end of the day. So if you're in the weight class of uh, 70 kilograms, whatever your body weight is, you're, you're competing against other people within that weight class. So say for example, you and I were the same weight and I had a total of 927, you had a total of 980, obviously you would win because your total is higher. So that would determine your placement in the competition. But all in all, with my first powerlifting competition, my goal is not even to place, it's really just to do it, to get a feel for it, to um, you know understand the rules and the regulations, to again, put my body through something through something that's never done before. Obviously, this mock powerlifting meet helped because in the days following the meet that me and Steven did, I kind of, um, I got a grip on recovery, on my, what my recovery should be like, what my sleep should be like, what my food should be like, and I actually felt really good the last couple of days, the last three or four days. Knock on wood, I haven't been sore um, much at all. So I think that's just an ode to how consistent and thorough my training's been in the weeks leading up to this, the last couple of months. And um, yeah, so with this first powerlifting, powerlifting meet, I'm just really excited to get onto the bar and just see what I can do, meet some new people, um, and just kind of do something that, once again, I've never done before. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this mock powerlifting meet, please leave a like down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Leave a comment if you have any questions for me, and I, I will always get back to you. Thank you guys for watching to the end. I appreciate it, and I will see you guys soon.